the book of Nehemiah goes together with the book of Ezra. It's sort of the continuation of the book of Ezra. It all plays really in the time after the exile. So what that means is in 586 BC, the Babylonians came and destroyed the kingdom of Judah. They destroyed the temple. They destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. And they took the nobility, the leaders uh, of uh, the Davidic kingdom to Babylon. Now in the course of time, the Babylonians were themselves conquered and um, taken over by the Persians. And the Persians, they had sort of a different um, policy, whereas the Babylonians wanted their enemies close uh, so that they couldn't revolt. The Persians basically thought, oh, we're nice to these other people and we allow them to go back and to rebuild um, their temples or the cities and that way they will be more loyal to us. This happened to um, the kingdom of uh, Judah as well. They were allowed to return. Some of them actually re only returned and they started to rebuild the temple. This happened uh, under Ezra and now Nehemiah is sort of like a second part to that. The, the book begins with Nehemiah in the capital city of the Persian Empire which was Susa at the time and he was the cupbearer, so sort of like a glorified waiter, of um, King Artaxerxes. Yes, I said he's a glorified waiter, but it also means as a cupbearer, he was actually trusted by the king, because, you know, basically he gives the king his cup, and so he could poison him if he wanted. So in a sense, the king trusts him, but it also means that the king has, a, in a sense, his ear. And so Nehemiah... Um, Here's a story about the destruction and the, 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 the condition of Jerusalem. And he's just quite dismayed by this. And, um, and apparently it shows on his face. The king, Artaxerxes, basically asks him what's up. Uh, why are you looking um, so downcast or why is your face fallen or whatever it's phrased. So Nehemiah tells him that he's just quite upset about the state and the condition of his city. And then Artaxerxes, nice guy as he is, he then gives him permission to return and um, to actually rebuild uh, the walls and he actually even also gives him building material to do so. So then Nehemiah goes back and the book of Nehemiah then is about Nehemiah returning to Jerusalem and rebuilding the city walls. He goes back and that's where the book, well, where it gets more interesting. He arrives in Jerusalem, he uh, gets a donkey and he rides around the city walls by night to inspect the, uh, the status of his city wall. And then he basically tells the leaders of Jerusalem, look, I'm here, I have permission to rebuild this wall, and that's what we're going to do. We have to understand that rebuilding the wall of a city, and the fact of a capital city of a conquered kingdom, gives them a semi-independence, right? From that point on, when they have a functioning wall with gates, nobody around them can really threaten them anymore. And in a the Persians, for them, it was probably a little bit risky to give that sort of uh, concession to, um, to conquered nations because they potentially then could go and uh, mount a revolt. And as you can, probably can imagine, the people around Jerusalem, the, the non-Jewish people, they were actually not very happy about this development. And uh, they did now everything to uh, thwart this building of, rebuilding of the wall. He had inspected these sections and this is actually for archaeologists, this is great because in chapter 2 and chapter 3 he's describing um, the sections of the wall with the names of the towers and based on that and what was found on the ground in Jerusalem they were actually quite able to reconstruct the walls uh, at the time um, which you know, usually don't find that in texts that people describe um, structures and buildings and stuff. He basically then splits up the people into groups and assigns a group to a section of a wall which goes from one tower to the next tower. Well, he, you know, he, when he assigns these workers to certain sections, he says it's from this gate to that gate and then for each gate he will have a name, right? So one gate um, is called the Dung Gate. Well, the Dung Gate is presumably where they were just carrying their refuse and their, um, their night pots out and they just chucked it out into um, the valley. Which, by the way, um, the valley that's going right in front of the city of um, Jerusalem, there's two valleys, that's where we get the idea of hell from. Primarily because they were carrying out all their, their, their dust bins and their night pots and they were just chucking it into that valley and partially burned some of it and then imagine you have like this valley with burning refuse and it's smelly and it's stinky and that's um, in Hebrew it's called the Gehinnom which then in Greek became Gehenna and then we call it hell. Um, so hell is a garbage heap. 
So they just start building this. And at the beginning, the, um, the people around who don't like that, um, they start just ridiculing. Right? Because first of all, they probably think they're not going to manage. But, you know, with the continual progress, they're getting more worried. And there's then a lot of intrigue within the story that they try to assassinate or uh, trick uh, Nehemiah away and try to assassinate him potentially. Um, or then they um, accuse him of rebellion against the Persian emperor because obviously if they're building a wall, then they want to be their own kingdom and all that. So it, there's actually a lot of drama that goes on. Um, and at one point, the, these um, adversaries, they, they basically want to attack and destroy the sections of walls that have been rebuilt. And you have then this famous picture of Nehemiah telling the, the builders to have in one hand a sword and then with the other hand work. Right, so, you know, he's placing sentries around the wall and, you know, so you have like this, whatever, a warrior builder sort of a picture. People argue about when this, when this actually happened, and, um, but 5 to 400 BC, to give you a really conservative frame. Um, now, um, obviously after this, there were many more wars and, you know, the... The Persians were conquered by the Greeks, by Alexander the Great, and Alexander the Great went all the way down to Egypt. And then when Alexander the Great died, his generals split his empire up between themselves. And so basically Jerusalem then was sort of in the middle between two, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies, between two generals. And, you know, it changed hands between them um, quite often. Uh, after that, the Jews for a short time had their own kingdom under the Hasmoneans, um, and then uh, the Romans blew into town and, well, the rest is history. The wall you see today that goes around the old city of Jerusalem that was built by uh, a Muslim ruler who, interestingly enough, had a dream, allegedly, about building the walls of Jerusalem.